Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing Nier Automata for the PlayStation 4. Nier Automata is an action role playing game developed by Platinum Games. The game is set in the year 11,945 AD in a post apocalyptic world. Basically, aliens sent machines to the Earth and drove humanity to the moon. Whilst on the moon, humanity created androids and sent these androids back to Earth to destroy the machines and reclaim the planet. That's the basic premise anyway. You play as 2B, a Yorha android who has to take the fight to the machines. The story is really some sort of hybrid between typical JRPG tropes and sci-fi ideas. It's quite a nice mix and it's definitely one of the most interesting games in terms of the story and the art style that I've played in recent times. The game is set in an open world, with each zone being connected in some way. It's not a huge open world like some games, but it's more concise and it's definitely designed well and there's always something to do. You know, there's lots of enemies to kill, there's plenty of side missions and there's generally lots of busy work. You've got forest areas, you've got overgrown cities, deserts and even like an amusement park to explore. Okay, so what is the game like to play? Well, first thing to note is that the game has a very long prologue and during this prologue, you cannot save the game, but it's only permadeath until you kill the first boss. But bear in mind, it can take about an hour to finish the whole prologue, and if you die during that process, you will have to start again. But as I said, it's only during the prologue. After this, you'll be taken to the bunker where you'll be able to save at these certain access points. The bunker is basically your, your sort of space station operations base. The game is primarily a combat game. You can use two different melee weapons and you can buy many different variations as you go through your adventure. You have far smaller versions, you have very heavy duty swords and axes that do more damage, you know, so there's lots of different variety. To help you in the combat you have a little robot that hovers over your shoulder and has a gun and a special attack. You can customise that special attack by purchasing chips. It's a really fun combat system and it's very easy to pick up and once you know what you're doing you can really do a wider range of very impressive moves and it looks fantastic when you're kind of in the middle of a battle. You can alter your character's abilities by installing various different chips into your system. If you want more power or better defences then you just install the chips that relate to those things. But you have limited space so choose wisely, although later on you can upgrade the sort of amount of space you've got so you can install more chips. Also, there is an auto-configure setting, so if you just want to be generic attack-based, balanced or defensive as a priority, you, you can just automate that so you don't have to spend a lot of time rummaging through the menus finding the right configuration. So, the permadeath thing only happens at the beginning, but during the main game, if you die, you will lose the items you've collected. But if you return to where you died, you can retrieve all of the items, but if you die en route to that, then they're gone for good. Honestly, it's not such a bad thing as it makes you more careful about how you deal with your health and how you like go into combat. Because, you know, once you die a few times and you lose all of your stuff, you definitely become a little bit more cautious later on. You're basically an AI, so when you die, it's just the body that dies. Your AI gets uploaded to the base and you just get a new body to play with that you can get from one of the kind of uh, vending machines of sorts where you save. There are also sections where you fly an attack ship and a mech it's a little bit like those retro shooters, you know, the camera changes to a top-down view or side-scrolling and you can enjoy some retro shoot -em up action for a, for a short time. The story is also something worth emphasising. When I heard about this game, I thought it was just another JRPG, but it's a lot more than that. You know, JRPGs, they all have these kind of very elaborate costumes, the male, the female characters all look quite similar, it's very camp and very kitsch. It's all about groups of people trying to do activities and they have crazy bosses and large swords and cheesy music. And this game has a lot of those things. But it's also got a really nice sci-fi vibe and the story, it's really very good actually. And it throws a few surprises in there along the way. You know, your initial mission to go to Earth and kill the machines sounds quite simple, but soon enough you'll realise that things are a little bit more complex than that. The game has a wide variety of machine enemies you can fight, ranging from foot soldiers to very large flying snakes and giant robot warriors. Also, the boss fights are worth mentioning as they are absolutely epic. The bosses feel like something from Shadow of the Colossus. You know, they're very huge and the fights can go on for ages and they are some of the most riveting and exciting moments in the game. Overall, it's a really cool game world with a very interesting story, 
The game combat is really easy to use and it's the kind of game you can pick up to play for about half an hour or you can just do mammoth five, six hour sessions. You know, so it's nice to have a game that has that option because even if you just play for half an hour, go out, kill some enemies, level up a bit and then save it, it's still worth playing. There is also an online feature. If you enable it during playthrough, you'll find Android bodies lying around the map. These bodies are basically belonging to other players who died. You can choose to revive them, loot the body or recruit them. Obviously you won't get a physical real life person playing with you, but for a short time you'll have a kind of a, like a, a little side assistant soldier who will just help you through combat, but they won't last too long. The game also has fishing because why not? I honestly don't get this fishing thing, but anyway, you can fish, congrats. The menus, they're very nice, very clear, very easy to use. But for me, it's the art style that really makes the game stand out above the rest. The graphics have this kind of washed out feel and it's very sort of muted in terms of the color palette. The main characters, they do look typical to the JRPG genre, you know, they look like they've just come out of a cosplay convention or a fashion show. But overall, the visual style is great and graphically the characters all look very impressive, the animations are good, the combat's smooth, the explosions are amazing, the environments are expansive and full of charm and full of attention to detail. The in-game music is a little hit and miss. I mean, on the whole, it's good, but you do get the odd track that is a little bit weird or annoying. The voice acting is decent, but again, it can get a little bit camp at times. Finally on the audio, the environmental ambience is beautiful and it really suits the locations you're in. All of the sound effects in general are good. The combat effects, the menu sound effects, they're all really nice and it's a very good game in an audio sense, barring some of the dodgy music. Okay, so what's good and what's bad? What's good? The game has an interesting story full of character, twists and turns. The art style is gorgeous and it's a lovely game to explore. The gameplay loop is very addictive and it's very easy to just pick up and play for a short or a long session. The customization options for your combat setup are complex and they give you real freedom to create your own type of character. The game has lots to do, lots of side quests and it's really good value for money. What's bad? The prologue can be a bit annoying as you can't save during the first hour or so but barring that, that's probably the only thing that really irritated me. Okay, so what is the verdict? Nier Automata is an excellent game with lots to do with an enjoyable and addictive gameplay loop. I really enjoyed it and I'd recommend it for anyone looking for a fun and interesting adventure. I don't generally go for JRPGs because I find them a little bit cutesy and a little bit kitsch for me and they just kind of get a little bit too camp at times. This one, it has more of a gritty sci-fi feel to it. It has a very kind of like, it's not like a roguelike, but it has that kind of like accumulative experience thing. You can die, you can lose your stuff, so there is an element of danger. You know, it feels like there's a kind of a role-playing game and an arcade game mixed into one, and it's a really nice complicated mix. And honestly, I, I really enjoyed it, and I found it such a, such a fun experience, and one that I would recommend for most people. So my score for Nier Automata is 9 out of 10. Okay, that was the review. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is Photography Gamer, signing off. Thank you.